Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, So we've been going through the prayers by Queen Kunti. It's in the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 8. And uh, we're up to text number 13. Thanks, 
35. Text 35, chapter 8. Bhavesmin Pushamananam Bhavesmin Pushamananam Bhavesmin Pushamananam Bhavesmin Pushamananam Avidya Kama Karma B Avidya Kama Karma B Avidya Kama Karma B Avidya Kama Karma B Shravana Smarana Thani Shravana Smarana Thani Shravana Smarana Thani Shravana Smarana Thani Karishyan Iti Kechana Karishyan Niti Keshava Karishyan Niti Keshava Srimad Bhagavatam First Canto Eight Chapter Verse 35 Bhavesmin Krishamananam Bhavesmin Krishamananam Avidya Kama Karma B Avidya Kama Karma B Shravana Smarana Thani Shravana Smarana Thani Karishyan Iti Kechana Karishyan Iti Kechana Bhavesmin Krishamananam Avesmenglishamananam Avidya Kama Karma B Avidya Kama Karma B Shravana Smarana Thani Shravana Smarana Thani Karishyan Iti Kechana Karishyan Iti Kechana Avesmen Krishna-nanam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-nam-n
might take advantage and gain liberation. You can all repeat. And yet others say, and yet others say that you appear, so that that you appear, appear for the sake of rejuvenating, for the, sake of of rejuvenating the devotional service, the devotional the devotional service, service of hearing, remembering, worshipping, and so on. Of hearing, remembering, worshipping, worshipping, and so on. In order that the conditioned soul, in order that the conditioned soul, suffering from material pangs, suffering from material pangs, might take advantage, might take advantage, and gain liberation, and gain liberation. So Queen Kunti is praying. This is Queen Kunti's prayer. She's offering a prayer to Lord Krishna. <laughs> So she's just explaining different reasons why Lord Krishna has come in this world. Queen Kunti, of course, is the aunt of Lord Krishna. And uh, at the same time, she understands Krishna is Swami Bhagavan. He's the personality of Godhead. And God is unborn. You know, he's the original person. The whole cosmic world, the whole material world, all comes from him. So how is it that he's here in this world? So Queen Kunti is giving different reasons why Krishna came. And she was saying things like, oh, one reason people say you came was uh, for the pleasure of all the kings. Many pious kings like King Yadu and so on for their pleasure. And another reason was because Lord Brahma had prayed for someone to come because earth was in a, a difficult condition. There were many problems on the earth. So they prayed to Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma had gone and prayed to Vishnu and then Vishnu said he would come in the Yadu dynasty. But then another reason was because Vasudeva and Devaki had prayed. Vasudeva and Devaki, they, they prayed to get the Lord as their child. So these were different reasons why Queen Kunti would say, maybe you came for this reason, maybe you came for that reason, you know. And here she gives another reason. She, she says that you came to rejuvenate the devotional service of hearing and remembering and worshipping. Because all of us conditioned souls, we're suffering from the material pangs. But if we engage in devotional service, if we do hearing and remembering and worship, then we can be liberated from the material world. So this way Queen Kunti is praying to Lord Krishna. So we'll read Prabhupada's purport, see what Prabhupada has to say. And this verse he said, In the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, the Lord asserts that He appears in every millennium just to re-establish the way of religion. The way of religion is made by the Supreme Lord. No one can manufacture a new path of religion as is the fashion for certain ambitious persons. The factual way of religion is to accept the Lord as the supreme authority and thus render service unto Him in spontaneous love. A living being cannot help but render service because he, he is constitutionally made for that purpose. The only function of the living being is to render service to the Lord. <coughs> the Lord is great and living beings are subordinate to Him. Therefore the duty of the living being is just to serve Him only. Unfortunately, the illusion living beings, out of misunderstanding only, become servants of the senses by material desire. This desire is called avidya or neshainas, and out of such desire 
the living being makes different plans for material enjoyment centered about a perverted sex life. He therefore becomes entangled in the chain of birth and death by transmigrating into different bodies on different planets under the direction of the Supreme Law. And this, uh, unless therefore one is beyond the boundary of his nations, one cannot get free from the threefold miseries of material life. That is the law of nature. The Lord, however, out of his causeless mercy, because he is more merciful to the suffering living beings than they can expect, appears before them and renovates the principles of devotional service, comprised of hearing, chanting, remembering, serving, worshipping, praying, cooperating and surrendering unto them. Adoption of all the above mentioned items or any one of them can help a conditioned soul get out of the tangle of neshines and thus become liberated from all material sufferings created by the living being, illusioned by the external energy. This particular type of mercy is bestowed upon the living being by the Lord in the form of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Om Ajnana Tirmirandasya Om Ajnana Tirmirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Chakshur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupatarubhyasya Vanchakaupatarubhyasya You drink so maras it gives you punya. Just like when you drink milk. If you drink milk, you, it's pious. That's good. But if you drink alcohol, then it's just the opposite. You get sinful reactions. You're going to suffer. You get disease. People drink the alcohol and it burns all the organs in their stomach because they're up, they drink so much alcohol, they burn all the organs and they live a very short life. So that way people are suffering in the material world. We have to understand where do we want to go? You go to heaven, you can live a long time. but. You also get old. There also there is death. So where will we go? We have to. There's another world beyond this world, the spiritual world. And we want to go there to be with Krishna. So we want to go out from this world of birth and death. So this is it. This should be our mood. Just like people, some people they're, they're very eager, they want to go, to, some people want to go to America, they want to go to America. I don't know why but some people want to go there. And they'll drop, they'll save all their money, they'll work very hard, they're always in deep. Uh, and then to get the visa you have to apply one year before or something, right? One year before you have to apply to the US. US huh? Yeah, US. To go to U.S. here, yeah. they'll one give you, they one wait, year. wait one year to get an interview and they may give you a visa, you can go. But in U.S., people go there, people are shocked to see the poverty sometimes, you know, there's so many beggars, so many poor people, so much crime, it's not so pleasant. Yes, people are thinking very nice, but actually there's so many problems. So where to go where there's no problem? 
We have to go beyond this world. You have to get out from this place of birth and death. You have to go into the, the kingdom of the spirit world, the spiritual world. If we say, by Kunta, no anxiety. This is the Kunta Loka, all anxiety. But this, the other place, by Kunta, no anxiety, no old age. No disease, no death, no unemployment, <laughs> right? No, there's no old age. Everybody's the same age in the spiritual world. When the four Kumaras went to the spiritual world, they saw, wow, everyone is the same age. There's no young, there's no old. Everybody is the same. Because they have spiritual bodies, we have material bodies. So it, it appears like we're old or we're young, but in the spiritual world that's not there. So there's no anxiety. You don't have to worry about getting old, you don't have to worry about death or anything. It's all eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. So our spiritual nature is like that and we want to develop that spiritual nature. And the way to do it? By hearing and chanting, that is important. This is how we begin to develop that spiritual body. So Lord Chaitanya is Krishna Himself. 5,000 years ago Lord Krishna came and He told everyone to surrender, right? In the Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dhatma Parigas. Krishna says, surrender to me. But He never showed us how to do it. So 500 years ago Krishna came again as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and He came again and He's showing us how to surrender. What was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doing? Chanting, Kirtan. He was doing always Krishna, Bhavna. That he was always working, serving Krishna, talking about Krishna. So we understand Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to be Krishna Himself. And He's come to teach everyone how to be Krishna conscious by engaging in Krishna service, Krishna Varnam. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, but he is not Krishna, he is not black. Lord Krishna is a very dark color, but Mahaprabhu is a golden color because he is in the mood of Radharani. Radharani is the example of devotional service. She is simply absorbed in thinking of Krishna and serving Krishna. So we also try to follow that mood, the mood of the gopis. And the best of the gopis is Srimati Radharani. So we remember all the activities of these devotees. And in this way we try to cultivate Krishna consciousness. And if we become Krishna conscious, then when we give up this body, we never have to come back again. Bhagavad Gita says, Tarvagyam Punarjanma Naiti Mamiti So Arjuna. Right? When you give up the body, you never have to come back again. If we've understood Krishna. So in this way, Queen Kunti is offering her prayer. Lord Krishna. Okay, any question? We've been having Rathiatra the last two nights. <laughs> Yes. 
wanted to get revenge for the death of his brother. So he began to fight with the Yakshas and they were fighting and it became a war, big war. Yeah. So Dhruva Maharaj was fighting and the Yakshas were fighting back and it took finally Lord Brahma had to come and you have to tell Dhruva Maharaj, you know, this is not good. That you you only lost one brother, but you killed so many yakshas, so you should stop all this violence. So he did. He stopped. He took it. He was over, you could say, he was overwhelmed by family affection. Dhruva Maharaj had some material attachment, right? He was attached to his brother. And when the brother was killed, he wanted to get revenge for it. Now that, that thinking, that mentality that is not good, just like if they say, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, Sometimes we, we think like that, oh, they did this to me, I'll get back at them, I'll get my revenge on them. So if we do like that, then everybody will be blind. When we say an eye for an eye, they knocked out my eyes, I will knock out their eyes. Everybody will be blind and nobody will have any teeth. Yeah. So, yeah, that's not the proper way. Rather we have to be tolerant, we have to totally tolerate. People may die, Dhruva Maharaj's brother died, yes it was unfortunate, but still Dhruva Maharaj reacted very strongly. Strong. Yeah. So he got instructions. Yeah. And you can see Parasaram also, Parasar, Lord Parasaram, he killed the Kshatriyas, 21 generations, right? Killed all the Kshatriyas 21 times. But after he'd done all the killing, then he had to do atonement. He had to go and atone for it. Although he's the Supreme Lord, he's an incarnation of God. So even though he was killing, because he was killing, he had to go and do tapasya to atone for all the killing which he did. So we should be careful also, we shouldn't try to use violence in the service of Krishna. We have to be care we have to, we have to be careful to control anger not to be controlled by the anger. You see, Dhruva Maharaj became <coughs> controlled by his anger. He was so angry, he went to war with all the yakshas and had a great battle. So, if we don't control the senses, then we become the slave of the senses. The mind and the reactions of the mind. You see, the reaction of Dhruva's mind was anger and he wanted to get revenge. And so he set about killing so many yakshas. So that was not approved, and that's why 
but Brahma, Swami Bhuva Man, they came and they told Dhruva Maharaj, you know, you have to stop it. You can't do it. You can't do all this killing. So, so we shouldn't be this we shouldn't allow anger to control us. That's very tough, Guruma. <laughs> yes, it's very tough. You have to practice controlling your mind. Where is the anger coming from? The anger is coming from the false ego. They did this to me, I'll get my revenge on them. Desire to trick. Huh? Desire to trick. Hatred. Desire, yeah, desire and hatred. Yeah, so we, we get angry and anger is one of the gates to hell. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said three gates to hell. Three gates to hell, right? You know? Uh -huh. Lust, anger, greed. So anger comes when we, if we don't get a, our desire, you know, we want something, we have the lust, we want to get something, we don't get it, we become angry. If you get it, if you get what you want, you become greedy for more. So from lust comes either anger or greed. You have to be very careful how we use anger. If you are the master of the mind and senses, then you can use anger. Like Hanuman, Hanuman could use his anger for the service of Lord Ramachandra in the great battle of Lanka. Hanuman could use his anger. And Arjuna could use his anger in the service of Lord Krishna. But we cannot just use the anger for my, for our own service. That is not good. Don't try to use anger for your service. You will be you will be the servant of the anger. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes what happens. He said, first of all, we become attached to something. And then we want it, we become lusty to get it. And when we don't get it, we become angry. And then when we become angry, then we lose our intelligence. And when you lose your intelligence, then you fall down into the pool of material existence. <coughs> so have to be very careful how, you, how you're affected by anger. Sometimes people get angry, you don't know, they're angry for three days. <laughs> Can't speak to them for three days. More than that. Uh, More than that. More than that. Most, most three days. Days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, to really affect us, anger, you have to be very careful. And on that uh, stage, Guru Maharaj sees the Lord form and he becomes angry because of the So what about us? <laughs> yes, well, it's a warning to us. Yeah. We have to be conscious. Don't be degraded. We have to understand everything in the proper manner through the eyes of script, scripture. Dhruva <laughs> Maharaj did go on, he went on, went back to Godhead. He went to Badrik Ashram and stayed in Badrinath. He did the Pasha there for some time. And then the Michael the airplane came and took him. 
que eu vou colocar. Então, see the result. Long ago, he became angry, but then he got over that anger. I studied all that. Yeah, he, he, he took the good instruction. So we should also understand this. So we should think, oh, Dhruva Maharaj did like that, but he's so advanced that I can also do. No. We should understand the lessons Dhruva Maharaj got. He was a Kshatriya. So he had that Kshatriya nature. That he wants to fight, he wants to get revenge, take action. We have to understand the lesson from it, that, that it was wrong, what he was doing was not right, it was wrong. So we shouldn't think, oh, he did like that, I can also do it wrong. That's not fair. We should understand. He learned what was, what was the proper behavior. So we should take the lesson from it. Uh, if I connect with the same topic, when, for example, we're in office, and let's say you're in a managerial position and you have to get the work done, and nobody by nature wants to work. So you have to be on top of them, you know, be angry the way you say. And uh, as devotees, we know that I, I shouldn't, you know, but if it is my duty, as a whatever householder, I have to earn money and do it. Then, even while I'm doing my duty, what consciousness should we carry? I have to anyway tell them that this is wrong and you have to do it, all that. So, how do we maintain our, how do you balance between the two? Yeah. Well, we have to be, sometimes you have to show a little anger. Just to, to you know, impress upon people what has to be done. But it's not that we have to maintain that anger forever. You know, I say you can use the anger, but don't be controlled by the anger. Right? So when you get when you're controlled by the anger, then that's the problem. That the anger becomes so so powerful that. You know, you're, you're not able to properly focus your mind, you lose all your intelligence. So there, there has to be that control over the mental condition. Yeah, we make a show of anger, but we don't allow ourselves to be degraded by it. That is a problem. Like this, Prabhupada would get angry, and then you say, do something about it. <laughs> right? And leave it behind. So, at some, some point, different times, Prabhupada would be angry. But he, he didn't maintain the anger forever, you know, a few moments, you know. You know somebody put salt in the Charanamrita. You know, Charanamrita is supposed to be very sweet, like nectar. Every morning Prabhupada would come and see the deities and then he would take Charanamrita. And so one morning he would give him the Charanamrita and put salt in the Charanamrita. Prabhupada, you know, somebody, Prabhupada, who has done this? You know, some, some young woman had done it, you know. Prabhupada just turned it to the manager and said, get somebody intelligent to do this. <laughs> Like so he'd be angry, but he wouldn't keep the angry mood for long. You have, we have to have that detachment from things, you know. Sometimes, you know, the children get angry, you misbehave, you get a little angry at them. But, uh, you know, you can't keep the anger for long. You can't, you can't be like that. You can't be, you can't become degraded by it. They have to control.
the, the, the emotion. That is the point. So we can use anger. You can use the anger if you have… if you're the master of your senses. But if you're not the master of your senses, then don't try to use the anger. Because then you get angry, you start hitting the children and then the children will grow up and hate you. <laughs> Maharaj is saying repeat it to my mama. He's saying repeat to my mama. <laughs> 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 Maharaj, uh, you're saying about uh, different incarnations of so, um, we are praying to Lord Narasimha Lord Dev. So, we are praying, so why, is there, uh, why, why is there no RFP for, let's say, the Lord Rama? Or, uh, why especially uh, Narasimha Dev compared to other uh, incarnations? Well, what happened was actually at one point Prabhupada was very ill and so the devotees asked Prabhupada about, you know, is there some prayer we can do for you or something we want to pray for you, for your safety. So then Prabhupada said, well, he said, after asking, he said, after asking, you can, you can see this prayer to Lord Nishinga. Because Lord Nishinga Dev is known to protect the devotees. Right? Lord Nishinga Dev appeared to protect the life. So the Prabhupada gave us that Nishinga Stotra, that we could sing that song, Namaste Narasimha. Just after the act, we would sing that song. Not that it's a special puja or anything. Although some places they in itself introduce that. But Prabhupada just said you can put a picture of Lord Nishinga Dev on the altar and you can see the Nishinga prayer at the end of the act. That will protect the teachers and it will protect the devotees and protect the moon. for that purpose, for the protection of the moon. The worship of Nishinga Dev is quite popular because Acharya, they also worship Lord Krishna. Prabhupada himself, he has given us that, that we can do that because he comes to protect them. But Lord Rama, well, we have Lord Rama in some of the temples these days. You know, worship of Lord Rama. You have to understand Lord Rama is an incarnation of Krishna as the perfect king, right? Maryada avatar, the perfect etiquette, the perfect behavior. So he's a, an incarnation. Lord Krishna, however, is the Swayam Bhagavan. He is a ras, he's full of all the rasas. Lord Rama is king. Queen Kunti was saying that actually the incarnation of Lord Krishna is more merciful than the incarnation of Lord Rama. Because Lord Rama is the king, he's the prince, it's so very difficult to approach him because he's always you know, the, on the throne, he's not so intimate. But Lord Krishna comes as a powerful voice. So it's much more intimate, approachable, and lovable. Lord Rama is majestic, you know, very solemn, and with the horn, and it's a very different, filled with all veneration. You come before Lord Rama, it's all Aishwarya and a lot of venerate and respect. But Krishna, with Lord Krishna, is much more free and intimate and loving. So, Lord Krishna is actually, he's the reservoir of all different relationships with the devotees. Whereas Lord Rama is very limited of human relationships. 
But we do have temples in Tulsa, like in Mumbai, Jubu, and also in London, Washington, D.C. also. Many also have, uh, many of our temples are wrapped around the Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when we say this is Krishna playing the part of the Catholic king, and when we chant the Maha Mantra, Lord Rama's name is also there. You know. So they are, it's a Buddhist, when we chant Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, uh, there were two devotees were arguing. One devotee said, This means Baba Rama, and another devotee said, Lord Rama Chandra. So they went to Prabhupada and they asked Prabhupada, Who said? And Prabhupada said, They both said. <laughs> it says, If the Rama could be Rama Chandra, and it could be Baba Rama. And later on, we found out also Jiva Goswami said it could be also Krishna. The drama is also another name of Krishna. So it's up to every individual how they worship. That when they're chanting, who are they addressing? Bala Rama or Lord Ramachandra or Lord Krishna. <laughs> So we chant the name of Lord Ram. And we worship, of course, we do Ram Nomi, it's a festival, an important festival, Ram Nomi, the famous day of Lord Ram. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he made more importance to the worship of Krishna. We are following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Our Lord Rama is the one of the other. But Krishna is the Swayambhad, the one who is Avatari. He's the source of all the avatars. All the avatars, they come from him. So Lord Rama is one form of Lord Krishna. The Supreme the Lord Rama is also God, but he's one of the, he's just a part, part of the aspect of God, not the full aspect of the God. Because he's showing the Dashara, the middle of being the serpent, the serpent of the but with Krishna, all the dances, <coughs> Durya Rasa, Vatsalya Rasa, Satya Rasa. Hanuman is always kneeling at Lord Rama's feet, waiting to serve him. But Krishna's friends, you know, they're pointing on his back. Mother, you showed us time in the mouth. So hold the tree. It's more intimate. So we want to experience that intimacy with Krishna. That's why we worship Krishna more. You can read about Lord Rama, it's also there in Srimad Bhagavatam in the ninth chapter. Some chapters about Lord Rama. But Srimad Bhagavatam is more on Krishna because Krishna is the source of all the other it is, it said, it is Jamsarkala Pumsa, Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. There are many incarnations of God, like Rama and Narasimha, but it is Krishna who is the original and supreme. He is the source of all the other Mm -hmm. 